Hello you guys, welcome to the ranting shop. Today I'm gonna be reviewing season for episode six of Ready to Love. We had to wait a little bit longer for this episode, so let's not wait too long to review and dig into it. So the women when they convened with Uncle Tommy, he said to them specifically that he wants them to date or to go on a date with someone that they would not normally go on a date with, somebody that was not their number one choice. So I want to start with Amber and AJ. So Amber decided you know, to take AJ out and she thinks that AJ is too arrogant and wants women to approach him. Okay, and Amber doesn't find that attractive. She wants the man to show his interest and to also pursue. She wants everybody to equally pursue each other. She wants there to be mutual pursuances. She doesn't want one person to be, oh, I'm this and I'm that and waiting for somebody to come and come up to them and gravel at their feet and say they're so good and so nice she wants it to be equal she wants it to be mutual and he's she she never got that from AJ and then AJ was saying like how come they never went out on a date and I feel like he knows why like you never showed interest in Amber so you expect her to just jump on you like you're the best thing since sliced bread you're the man you pursue her you show your interest in her and he didn't do that until Amber you know, because of the assignment Tommy gave them, took it up on herself to take him out. So I don't think there's no future with Amber and AJ. She's not feeling him. I'm not feeling him. I don't like this whole complex that these men have of being the prize these days. They want women to pursue them. They want women to, to, to court them. I just don't find that whole thing attractive. I don't find it um, masculine and it makes when women are looking for providers protectors and all these things it, it, it doesn't give you provider and protector it gives you let me stay home and you work and bring me money like it i just don't like what's happening right here and a lot of men feel like because they have a little bit of money that makes them a price it does not it absolutely does not because women have money too women have money too so if you're gonna say money makes you a prize i guess we're both prizes I mean, I don't know what's happening. I feel as if men, and I'm going on a tangent here, I feel like men don't like the fact that women have decided to be self-sufficient and independent of them. They don't like that. They want to be needed. They want to be wanted. And women are showing men that we don't need you. We might want you, but we do not need you. And these men cannot take that. So they're coming back at it with, oh, well, um, we're the prize. So you should be chasing us anyways. And you women always do this. And you women always do that. And it's like, it's just, just this whole role reversal that I'm not feeling at all. But anyways, so Chris and Chris and Tiam went out on a date. Chris was very surprised because he didn't get any, any, indication that chrysanthemum liked him so when she took him out on a date he was surprised but nothing came of it like she she's not feeling him in any romantic sense and he's not really feeling her like that because he was rejected initially so he's deciding to you know stick with amber at the moment at the time and she's deciding to just keep chris as a friend because there's there's nothing there beyond that she said that her mother is not affectionate so she was never affectionate um she didn't know her father until six years ago which i think is weird and it makes me question whether her mother went to italy and had a fling or whether her mother went to italy just specifically to have a mixed child i have no idea that's the way she makes it seem and um the father only recently came back in her life and, and stuff like that and she also said that she doesn't really have re or are she's never really been or has been in any relationships that's also a red flag are you avoiding it are you um just have do you have commitment issues what's going on with you chrysanthemum okay so joelle and amber go out on a date and um while you know watching this particular episode we see that joelle is asking amber for a kiss but all his time going out on dates with venetia is never asked her for a kiss so i wonder what that means in regards to how he perceives both women because i'm not understanding how venetia supposed to be your top choice and you never kiss her but you go out with amber for the first time and you're already asking for kisses like What's going on, Joel? I feel like Joel was laying it on really thick with the, you heard me, and yes, God, and all these types of things he was saying. And I feel like it was to, for Amber to be attracted to him. And it worked. She was, she became more attracted to him after that date. It may have been something he was doing for self, self, self-protection you know because it was this man's time to go on this particular episode so the reason probably why we never saw him kiss venetia is because i don't know it was men's time to go at this episode and then 
the numbers are dwindling things are getting more difficult so i guess to secure his space he figured okay why let me just romance a little bit you know that may have been his strategy i have no idea i feel like last episode a lot of people were speaking about how amber is a pick misha who is basically a woman who has literally no standards and would follow whatever the man says and i feel like with amber it's purely strategic i don't think she's a pick misha but i feel like in order to stay on the show she has to stick with the person that she has the most connection with and that's chris if it means obliging to his ways of seeing life then that's what she'll do to move further i don't think that she's a person with zero standard and just goes along with what anybody says but i feel like it's purely um a strategy from her but we shall see moving forward how it how it progresses um then we have ron and alexis and what annoys me about alexis what annoyed me about alexis was that she's very boastful and she's very competitive and you could tell because she couldn't wait to go to the women and tell them oh ron is my name ron says i am his number one and it's like she's saying it to like let these women know oh not to pursue ron ron is mine when the reality of the situation is you're not even that interested in ron you just want ron to be interested in you you're interested in aj if if you had to make a choice now alexis between aj and ron we know that you take aj so these women literally just want these men to be attracted to them just because like a it's like a security blanket i just want to know that you're i'm your top so if anything goes to shit i know i could always fall back on you I know it's a game, but it's just irritating to me. He also, she also um, spoke about, well, tried to get him to clarify or reiterate his number one because she wants to be sure, I guess. But I just am not, I don't see the same thing I see when Alexis is with AJ. Like, she's not that into Ron, in my opinion. But anyways, we shall see. At this point, it's just pure competitiveness. So, I also put that, and also Ron said that, Alexis was still, you know, his number one choice or their relationship was still above that of Chrysanthemum. But that does not rule Chrysanthemum out because in the next episode, we're going to see him having issues with choosing which one he wants to get to be with, you know. So there's that. And when the women convened, you know, to figure out who was going home, Alexis immediately put AJ at the bottom after she heard about the date that AJ had with Kyra. Was it jealousy? I have no idea, but I feel as if you shouldn't compare your connection with someone to another person's connection with that person i feel like that's the downfall of all these competitors on this show they're always comparing where somebody is or somebody else versus where they are with that person and i don't think it's disingenuine it's just that he has a different type of connection with kyra than he has with you but the way she took it was oh well you're doing all this for kyra you, you never did all that for me and immediately wanted to put him at the bottom just for that and i feel like that kind of irritated me when Alexis did that because it's like you want these men to treat you the best and be the best around you so that when you convene with these women you could boast and say oh he did this with me all these women are competitive and all that all of them they live for that round table discussion that they have just so they could make each other jealous <sighs> women in a nutshell Kyra's competitiveness I said is starting to irritate me and before I even go into that um Kyra had the date with um aj and kyra felt like they have issues with communicating however because he put in the effort of you know the the wine cellar and the lobster and, and the flowers and all these things he somewhat redeemed because remember in the first episode she was clowning him for not paying their tab when they went on a date and um the whole time i suppose he's been trying to change her perception he's been trying to change her perception of him so i guess this did helped we all know kyra wants aj and I've said this before, I don't know if what she initially initially said was to keep him to herself, to make him unattractive to other women so she'd have a less, she have she would have more chances with him, or if she did that just because she was salty and wanted to share with the women. I don't know. But one minute he's El Chapo and you're bashing him to other women, the next minute you're on a date, giggy gin and laughing and eh, 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 eh. like what's going on? What's going on? And she between Jason and AJ, she likes AJ more. You could just tell. Like, the whole vibe is different when she's with AJ. When she's with Jason, it's more so like, oh, he's cute, but it's not like an attraction, you know? Anyways, um, so it was Liz that was talking about her date with Jason, and she said that they shared a kiss and so on. And, of course, Jason became attracted to Liz after that masquerade ball when he, I suppose, saw her in a different light. And um, it, it really showed me something about Jason. Jason is purely physical, 
very purely physical and i do understand that men start with attractiveness and then start to see the inner you but it was so blatant and so obvious that the switch was because of her his perceived his perception of her and his attraction to her sexually just i don't know about jason to be honest with you i don't feel like Liz should be wasting her time with jason they don't look like a good match for each other but he went for the kiss and she accepted it and um i don't know i just of course david she says is still on her mind david is a big red flag liz liz i don't know david is a red flag you know david has issues with it seems like whether it be physical or emotional abuse he has issues and if you're unable to see that i don't know i don't know i'm, I'm questioning your level of perception because sometimes liz comes across like she's completely naive like maybe she's not but she comes across like she's oblivious to these men's true intentions with her and i don't know i would think long and hard about um david liz seriously okay so then when kyra hears that all of a sudden she gets jealous because kyra wants the men to kiss her feet she wants the men to only show their interest in her and it's like didn't you know that you came on a dating show where people would be dating multiple people you cannot expect these men to 100 percent show interest in only you you cannot expect these men to give you queen treatment and treat the other women like they're scraps this is a show you're getting to know each other the same way you cannot even tell who's your number one how are you mad at these men for exploring their options kara is irritating to me the competitiveness just pisses me off like i understand your inner competition but the competitiveness from her is such a turn off for me like she's not i'm not her biggest fan like her and alexis they're so competitive it's such a turn off to me i don't see it for them at all i don't see it for them at all you know she really doesn't want jason you know she's doing all this shit getting jealous about jason kissing liz you're not interested in jason the vibe we're getting from you is that you think he's cute you think he's like your little brother or little cousin that's the vibe we get from you and him of course next episode we're going to see them share a kiss and i'm pretty sure it's it, it, it's fueled by the fact that liz said he kissed her so this is all strategy for kyra all strategy for kyra and it's just irritating to me and i know this is a show but just to watch that it just annoys me i hate one-sided things like you, you want the person to to do to go above and beyond for you and you're not doing the same for them you 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 have refused to state your number one it's giving me um you know the last season with um adriana that's the vibe it's giving me where she never fully stated who was her number one until the end and it seems like they're kind of propping her to be this season's adriana in a sense where she will not tell us who she picks until the end i'm already irritated by kyra um i could tell you guys the one thing none of these relationships will last the reason why i say that is because everything is so competitive and that is what is fueling them it's not genuine attraction it's not, not anything genuine it's just competitiveness and when that competitiveness goes away we see at the reunions how these relationships crumble anyways AJ and Chris was at the bottom. AJ, Chris, and Dietrich were kind of at the bottom. Chris has been friend zoned. The only person who's interested in Chris is Amber. AJ has been exiled. The only person interested in him, interested, well, Alexis and Kyra are interested in him. Um, and Dietrich, nobody's interested in Dietrich. So, of course, to me, the best choice would have been for Dietrich to go home. Because at least the other men have one connection, but Didrik had no connection. And it seemed like a big reason was because he just wasn't very he open to these women. He wasn't open to the process. He wasn't open to these women. And they peeped that. And they, like, I mean, love is risky. Dating is risky. You could get your heart broken. But you want people to have confidence in you when they don't know about you they don't know what you're about they don't know anything about you like and when he went on the date with with uh venetia i don't know if i spoke about their date 
We were talking about always oh, nervous around Venetia, always oh, scared, always oh, this and that. And then when she said she has zero tolerance for some BS, he took it as something to make him even more intimidated by her. Because it seems like he just came on the show to waste people's time. Because why would you intim be intimidated if someone is telling that she's not interested in the BS and she has no tolerance for it? Why would that scare you? It's because you, you're coming to bring BS to people's lives, Diedrich. And I'm so happy you got sent home because... Why? What would have been your purpose there? What would have been your purpose? You're not opening up. People don't barely know who you are. You're intimidated by these by some of these women, and 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 and, and Venetia wasn't having it. Like, if you're not gonna show me that you're a leader, if you're not gonna show me that you're somebody that you know I could count on to to support me, to to protect me, then what is your purpose? And um, so it was between AJ and Diedrich. Because a lot of people thought AJ was a playboy and he's not serious and he's, you know, giving off sexual vibes but not anything long-term, not a serious long-term vibe. And that's interesting considering what he seems like he wants is something long-term. So if you're giving off sexual vibes but then you, you don't want to lead with sex, you're giving off mixed messages, AJ. And these women were not feeling the mixed messages. Alexis was the one that was, you know, I guess nominated to break it down to AJ. And Kara was the one nominated to break it down to Diedrich. Of course, we know Diedrich was sent home. While Alexis was telling AJ, you know, what the women thought, he kind of turned her around and put her on him to distract her. And she was falling for that stuff. She was like, oh my gosh, Alexis, I get distracted. I don't get the attraction to AJ, you guys. Is it me? Because I don't see him as attractive. I don't see none of these men as attractive. I don't see Joel as attractive. I don't see AJ as attractive. I don't see Ron as attractive. I definitely don't see Chris as attractive. I don't see none of these men as attractive. So, for me, it's like, whatever. But Alexis is clearly feeling AJ. And she and Kara have this competitive thing going on. Such a turn off. But we're going to see how things progress next episode, you guys. Let me know if there's something that I missed. You know, I am so happy to be back talking about Ready to Love with you guys. In my current part of the world where things are getting a bit difficult with the whole C19 situation, I feel I believe we've moved up to a level 3. And remember, we've been spoiled in this part of the world. We've been thoroughly spoiled. We haven't had to do any shutdowns. I don't believe anybody has missed a day of work. Things are pretty normal, and I really hope that it stays that way. But anyways, you guys, it was fun having this review i need to run to the supermarket because lines are from here to new york honey lines are extremely long so of course i don't want to go too early because i don't want to be waiting in line for too long so i'm gonna wait a little bit maybe until the sun goes down and see like what happens the, the supermarket might very well be empty you guys and can we talk about what's the correlation between toilet paper and covid19 i have no idea it might very well be an indirect correlation because when people think about lockdown, their interpretation of lockdown is you're unable to leave your home. And people are thinking, well, if I can't leave my home, where am I going to get toilet paper? And then you need to poop every day. So you need to use toilet paper every day. So it's like, I think that's where the correlation is. People's misunderstanding of what lockdown means, you know, because if they thoroughly understood, they wouldn't be rushing to the supermarkets, buying out every sh in the supermarkets, you know. It's like, and also the media adds to the panic. It's like, don't panic, but then you're adding to the panic, talking about near shutdown. It's crazy. The media perpetuates panic, and then when people panic, they're saying, don't panic. Anyways, when this place would normally be noisy, it's very empty. Businesses are closed down. Um, people are just, I guess, trying to stay safe at home. You know? Um, me, I'm gonna go buy some essential stuff. I already have to let people and stuff like that, but more so food items canned stuff you know i'm gonna see what i get but anyways you guys thank you for tuning in to our ready to love review um i have some i have allergies so that's how i'm always sniffling anyways you guys thank you for listening to my review of the ranting shop oh of ready to love um be sure to like and subscribe and see you guys next time Bye bye